Hey everyone, it is Carla the Bubble Lush, and I just wanted to give you guys a quick update for how 38 weeks was going. Um, sorry, I am a little puffy, I just woke up from a nap. <laughs> the non-stress test was very stressful. <laughs> um, anyways, so Thursday when I turned 38 weeks, I had a growth scan, and then I had a meeting with a perinatologist. Um, <clears throat> the reason why I had this growth scan done was because um, I was diagnosed with uh, factor 5 clotting disorder and one of the issues with, with uh, factor 5 is that because of um, because of blood clots the placenta can be compromised in its function and it can lead to interuterine growth restriction so they were concerned that the baby was going to be too small. My midwives weren't really concerned because they could feel the baby and they knew that it was a good size baby but they still wanted to have a growth scan done and they wanted um, me to meet with a perinatologist that would be able to um, help me I guess kind of plan how I was going to treat the factor 5 afterwards. So my ultrasound was first thing Thursday morning I was literally the very first patient there and um, I get into the room the girl the, the tech is very nice I don't think I'd ever had her before um, she puts the, you know, you know, she starts doing the ultrasound, and immediately we can tell that the baby is still head down, which we knew from the non-stress test on Monday that the baby was head down. <coughs> Apollo says hi. And, and um, instead of facing out like she was on Monday, she's rotated and is facing my spine. So she's in like perfect position. I think the UPS is outside. Or Apollo just knows I'm trying to do a vlog. He's like, let's bark. That'd be fun. Let's bark. Um, anyway, so she um, she's like, you know, this is going to be great for doing measurements, but it's going to be really bad for taking pictures. And I was like, that's fine. At this point, I don't, I don't need a grainy ultrasound picture, like, just take your measurements, let me know how she's doing, she'll be here in a couple weeks, and I'll see her in all the time, it'll be fine. I'm used to her not cooperating, so, <laughs> so it's fine. Alright, so they started doing the measurements, and, um, Chris wasn't able to come to this appointment, I should tell you, if you're on my Facebook, you know this already, but, um, his other managers called out sick and he was already short-staffed so he couldn't come to this appointment. It's the very first appointment he's ever missed and uh, he was very upset about it. So, and I really wish he had been there looking back. I mean it's not his fault at all but I really would have handled it much better if he had been there. So, I'm alone. <clears throat> They start doing the ultrasound, she's looking to make sure that the baby only has two kidneys and one bladder and etc etc. She starts taking measurements and um, I can tell that most of them are fine, right? Like so she does the diameter of the head and the head's not not that big across, it's only, it's measuring at 37 weeks and I'm 38 weeks so I'm like alright, small head, sweet. Then she does the head circumference. So when I mean diameter, she measures from side to side, or maybe front to back. I think it's across, though. And uh, that's only 37. And then when she does the circumference, that's 39 and a half weeks. And I was like, all right, so it's just got like a long head. Awesome. <laughs> then she measures the femur length, and that's 39 and a half weeks. So measuring a week and a half ahead, no big deal. She's always had long legs, and Dad and I are tall, so who cares? Um, and then she measures the, the abdomen circumference, and that's when things get a little scary. So, for those of you that haven't had an ultrasound, um, what they do is they find the correct cross section because they're looking for anatomical landmarks. And then once they find the correct cross section, they do a, a dot on one side of the circle, a dot on the other side of the circle, and then they start growing a I don't know, a, a circle that'll encompass the cross-section of the abdomen, right? This is making sense? 
So she draws a rough circle and she's resizing it. And the whole time I'm watching at the bottom, it gives you the measurement and it also gives you the coordinating weeks. Uh, how, you know, what gestational age that size correlates to. So I'm watching the circle and it's going 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. And then to my horror, it just starts measuring centimeters. And I was like, I looked at her and I go, um, I think you did that one wrong. <laughs> And you should probably do it again. And she was like, yeah, I'm going to redo that one a couple times. So she does it again. And this one's like 42 weeks. And then she does it again. This one's like 41 weeks. It averages out her average abdomen um, <laughs> age is uh, 41 weeks, five days. So she has a huge abdomen. Um, and that's how they, they guess the weight based on the abdomen. <clears throat> so then she looks on my amniotic fluid and she's like, it looks good, there's a big pocket here, big pocket here, and she does a measurement and it's 18 centimeters. And then, you know, she's done. And she's like, I'm going to show these to the doctor, the doctor's going to come in in like five minutes and they'll go over the results with you and, and then you'll meet with a specialist. And I was like, okay. So she leaves the room, she leaves um, the all the measurements up on the screen and so I'm copying them down, which is... I have them on my notebook here. So they gave um, an estimated age of 39 and a half weeks. So she's measuring a week and a half ahead. Big deal. And um, her heartbeat was 147 and she has a, a three ventricle cord or whatever. So no big deal. So the, um, the perinatologist comes in just one of them, not the one I'm going to be having the big meeting with. Um, and it's like, okay, so this is a big baby. And I was like, yeah. She goes, um, looking at you, you know, I'm not surprised that, she, you know, she has long legs and she's measuring a bit, a, a bit ahead in the head. And uh, she's like, but the main concern is the abdomen. The abdomen is very large. Um, she's like, uh, you know, the abdomen is is measuring almost 42 weeks and we're estimating that she weighs 8 pounds 11 ounces. At this point, um, I kind of have a minor freak out in my head. I had just weighed myself <laughs> before I went to this appointment and I had only gained 8 pounds 13 ounces. She's saying that my baby weighs 8 pounds 11 ounces and I'm like, how is that possible? How is it possible that I, I haven't even gained that much weight? You know, I was like, I've gained less than nine pounds, and you're telling me my baby weighs almost nine pounds. And she's like, well, you know, big people grow big babies, and small people grow small babies. And I was just like, that doesn't, that doesn't help. <laughs> so um, she said the tummy is in the 95th percentile, and that I have a lot of amniotic fluid. She's like, it's not um, like I'm high level, but she's like, it's the high level of normal. So in my mind, I've imagining when my water does break, like a huge tidal wave. <laughs> okay, so at this point I'm not that freaked out. She's like, alright, so go wait in the waiting room and we'll call the perinatologist in. So I call Chris and he's like, so how did it go? And I was like, well I just finished up the gross scan and I'm waiting to meet with the specialist. He goes, How's, what was the ultrasound like? And I was, I told her, you know, she's face down, she's facing my spine, so she's like locked and loaded, ready to go. They can't tell if she's engaged yet, but it looks like she's getting pretty close. Um, I told him all the measurements, I told him the tummy measurement, and he got a little freaked out, and then I go, and they think that she weighs 8 pounds 11 ounces, and he was just like, oh my, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, dainty girl, <laughs> like, dainty, 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 my dainty little girl, <laughs> um, and so in my head I'm just thinking, okay, so I'm 38 weeks, I have a clotting disorder, this baby is ginormous. They don't want me going past 41 weeks. They don't want me having a C-section because of the clotting disorder. So they're probably just going to induce me early. Like, that's what I'm going into the meeting expecting them to say. I'm just going to induce you early. I can't believe I've already talked for nine and a half minutes. Anyways, so I go in and meet with the perinatologist. And, um, you know, they have you do the thing where you get weighed and you pee in a cup. And they take your blood pressure. And my blood pressure was like low and normal for me. I was amazed because I thought my blood pressure would be like through the roof. Um, 
and mainly they said that, you know how I said I was probably going to have to go on blood thinners after the delivery. Instead of being on them for six months, they think they're, I'm only going to have to be on it for like four to six weeks, which is good because it's not a pill uh, form of a blood thinner like <laughs> my midwives are telling me. It's a shot. Then I'm going to give myself either once or twice a day, so that sucks. Um, and I'm going to start that 12 to 24 hours after delivery. I asked about uh, side effects of the blood thinner. And they said that, you know, bruising at the injection site, duh, it's a blood thinner. And, um, what was the other one? Oh, it can affect your platelet levels. So, and, you know, my blood. So I'll need to go and have lab work done just to check a complete blood panel and uh, make sure everything's looking all right. They want me to have another growth scan in three to four weeks or at 41 weeks um, if I'm still pregnant. And if she weighs 500 grams, then they'll give me it just an optional c-section. Five, not 500, 5,000 grams. 5,000 grams is 11 pounds. Holy crap. Yeah, if she weighs 11 pounds, I would possibly just go for the optional c-section because that is huge. That's huge. That scares me. Um, they suggested I wear compression stockings in labor to help with blood clots in the legs. They said that they would only induce me early if my blood pressure went up to 140 over 90 and I was spilling protein, so if I had preeclampsia. Um, but they could induce me at 41 or 42 weeks, and I was like, seriously? I thought you guys weren't going to let me go past 41 weeks. And um, the main fear is shoulder dystocia, because she's so big. So that means her head would get out, but her shoulders wouldn't be able to fit. So they, were, they are not going to do a vacuum or forcep delivery with me. They said if her hand, if her head cannot fit or if she's you know having trouble progressing through the birth canal, we'll just do a C-section. <laughs> um, they don't want me having prolonged labor or stalled labor because of risks of blood clots, and um, that could be a sign that she's not going to fit. So they'll just do a C-section. <laughs> so basically, their solution for everything was like if she gets too big, we'll just do a C-section. If you go too long, we'll just do a C-section. If if she doesn't want to fit, we're not going to force it, we'll just do a c-section. And I was just like, at this point, I'm crying. <laughs> I'm just crying. I've like totally lost it. All I want to do is go back to the midwives where they, they never mention c-section. <laughs> like, I know that it's good to know, I guess, that it's an option because I can start wrapping my head around it, but it was very, very scary. Um, they said that their concern for the placenta, you know, isn't as strong as it was, um, which is why they're going to be willing to let me go past 41 weeks now. Fabulous. Because it's obviously, obviously functioning very well because it's giving her tons and tons of nutrients and she is growing so big. And um, they also said that the chance of a stillbirth within one week of a non-stress test is two in a thousand. So they're not concerned about that. <laughs> and uh, they suggested that I meet with a hematologist while in the hospital. So basically, they were just no help at all. <laughs> no help. Usually when you go to a specialist, they're like looking for everything wrong and they're like freaking you out. These people freaked me out by just how calm they were. Like, they were, Because it's it's like in their back pocket, they always have a C-section. If anything goes wrong, we'll just do a C-section. So I'm still working on getting her out <laughs> early because she is um, obviously big. Now I should do a disclaimer that there is... Um, a certain error associated with ultrasound. There's a 10% error, which at this pound, this point is plus or minus a pound. So she could weigh seven and a half ounce, or seven pounds eleven ounces, or nine pounds eleven ounces, anywhere in that range. The perinatologist and the midwife still agree that she's probably going to be gaining about a half a pound a week. So if I go to my due date, she'll probably be anywhere between nine eleven and eleven eleven. And if I go past my due date, I don't even want to talk about it. So, <laughs> she's so big, and I'm not even trying to gain a, to like grow a big baby. And they checked my, um, my glucose test results, and they were like, your test results are fabulous. And I was like, I know. I'm not, I, you know, I'm not diabetic. I'm not feeding her a ton of sugar. I haven't gained a ton of weight. And they were like, well, then she's just going to be a big baby. So, it was kind of stressful. It was very stressful. 
I didn't go to work that day. <laughs> I was very stressed. So, but I'm okay with it now because I talked to the midwife. So this is a long video. I'm going to stop it and I'll do a quick update about um, 38 weeks and my midwife appointment today. Thanks for listening. Just wanted to let you know what happened at the, uh, the grow scan and the specialist meeting. I uh, hope everyone had a great weekend and um, I'll be posting another video shortly. Bye guys.